Welcome back, Flyers Nitty Gritty fans, to Getting Gritty With It with your host, Yuri Wallach, with my special guest of the evening, Amadeo Grassi. How you doing, buddy? How you doing, Yuri? <laughs> Pleasure to be a, po- a part of the podcast today. Thanks, man. Thanks for coming on. And Chris Marr, returning guest. Yeah, I've uh, been here a couple of times. What's up, man? Thanks for having me on. <laughs> wow, Appreciate you're looking, th- you're looking thrall. I love it. Uh, yeah, but for the Flyered Up podcast, happy to have them on. I mean, you guys have seen Chris before on the podcast before. Um, he does his own thing on the side. That's how we met Chris, and that's how we met Amadeo. They are part of Flyers Nitty Gritty as well. But you know, they got their own Flyered Up podcast. So make sure to check that out, and we'll we'll do a shout out for that at the end of this podcast. And you know, we've done that for you, Chris, in the past, but I want to make sure we make that that clear but welcome fellas got a good uh good day of uh of podcasting <clears throat> before we get into the bad news i'm gonna talk about the sponsor because i always forget to do this sorry uh jim steaks steaks on south thank you for jim's for sponsoring us again they are flyers fans make sure to check out jim steaks um again covid era support your local businesses we do not want to see them disappear um you know, they have amazing pictures on those walls. I don't want to see them go anywhere. All right. Thank you, Jims. All right. Let's get down to business. Okay. The Flyers. Suck. Okay. You, <laughs> I, uh, understandably so. Just to say it bluntly. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, how else do you want me to really look at that? I mean. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, listen, if you want to be blunt, the Philadelphia Flyers right now have played like arguably the worst team in the league or one of them. Um, they have not been... They have not been consistent in any respect, and they just come off a very disappointing 4-3 loss uh, to the New Jersey Devils, where they pretty much were outplayed majority of the game uh, until they decided to, I guess, kind of turn it up, fight back a little bit, get, get some good chances. Um, but really, just overall team play was not there. Chris, I'm going to go to you first, and then I'm going to chime him in. What are your thoughts from the, uh, the Devils game? Uh, I had the um, the pleasure to be in attendance for this one. Um, it, it was terrible. I mean, I've I've never seen a team where like they they have like a good game or like look to have a good game and and like you know Monday's game was it I I, I looked at it as a step forward in the wrong direction because you your game took a step forward the way you've played but you still lost you know yeah. you, like you you just didn't get two points that night and I'm thinking to myself all right. You got New Jersey tomorrow. Let's uh, let's kind of pick this up here and go on a on a on a run. But they just haven't done that, and they've had their chances. I mean, this is like they're probably in the middle of the most important stretch of the season right now, with everything that's gone on. And at this point, it, it doesn't it doesn't look like like that they're going to be in. I mean, they're three. They have three more games played than Boston, and they're still two points behind them. And you know, I know I know games in hand don't don't matter until you win, but I'm not just going to, you know, say that all oh, Boston, you know, I, I just can't see Boston losing three games there. And you know what I mean? If, if that were the case, if it was that neck and neck at the end, but I mean, last night's game was, I mean, I mean, you said it perfectly. They, they showed up and they played 10 minutes of 60. Like they showed up in the last maybe 10 minutes of that third. I mean, they, 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 yeah. they did absolutely nothing offensively in the first period. They had the power play, which was the only thing that gave them a little bit of an offensive spark. And then New Jersey just went right back to what they were doing. Um, I know, I know we're going to talk about the press con the, uh, the press conference later. Um, one of the things I wanted to mention was, was off the rush, but I'll get to, I'll get to that later when we talk about that. Um, Cause it's something that Fletcher hinted at. Um, and that's been an issue for majority of the year. They get scored off the rush um, a lot. And uh, yeah, last night was not a good game. It, it, it's embarrassing to lose games like this. I mean, it's it is because there there's been a handful of games this year where they've been completely outplayed. Um, they, they like, and I mean, they're not even just outplayed, completely embarrassed. Like nine nothing, seven three at Lake Tahoe. They lost six one three times to Buffalo, Boston, and the Islanders. I mean, I could go on and on. They had the blown lead at home against Boston in the last like remaining five minutes of the third period on national television. Mm-hmm. Um, 
the the amount of games they've lost this year to are just totally embarrassing. Is it's incredible? <laughs> that was how you really feel, Chris. <laughs> I, I hate it, man. I, I because I hate talking about this. Like, yeah, I hate I know. that we got to sit here and talk about how bad this team's playing. I, I well, would rather be talking about how you know, they, they, like last year they lose a the game and they win a couple in a row, and then they lose maybe one or two, and then they they win a bunch in a row, and then they went on the nine game winning streak. I'd rather be talking about how they you know could play like that. So I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I feel you. I'm a Dale. What do you think? I mean, I guess for uh, Chris's uh, sanity, at least we're not the Buffalo Sabres. We're not that dumpster fire yet. But no, I don't believe that's ever going to happen. But to me, this team is the most consistently inconsistent team I've ever seen. It's just I don't understand how you can have one really good game and then you play 24 hours the next night and it's a complete 180. You play for 10 minutes, like you said. And I just don't understand how one transpires to the next. And it's so much to where it sounds like a broken record. Chris has said this many times in his videos on the podcast. It's a broken record at this point. It's the same mistakes that come back to haunt this team. The turnovers are in their, in their own zone. They look so easy to play against in their own zone. They have no structure. They have no, their breakouts are terrible. And yet, Fr- frankly, the, the goaltending, yeah, hasn't been good as of late either. Carter Hart, yes, he has been struggling the entire season. Granted, yes, the defense in front of him has been bad, but also he hasn't been making that save to sometimes make up for the defense. But yeah. it just feels like everything is going bad for this team right now. Just everything. Bad defense, not as good goaltending. The offense is still the offense. Like, I'm not worried about their ability to score, but it feels like it's more the... I'm a little worried. I am a little. I'm worried too. It's like it feels more the top guys that are scoring more than the depth, like it was last could, year. I think that's just because sure their their bottom six lines just. It, it, am I the only one that kind of realizes? And I've talked to you, Yuri, about this before, and and I know you said it to me too. Whenever Lawton leaves the bottom six, they don't do anything. Like whenever Lawton's taken out of the bottom six, they just can't. I, I I don't know what it is. Yeah, I mean it's it's the it's the lack. Well, it's the lack of a fourth line center that's ready. I mean, we like Bunneman, but he's not necessarily ready for that type of physical role. We have to remember, fourth line role is not you're not playing against the agile, you know, uh, Patrick Kane, who's f- you know five ten or whatever. He's not going to hit you in the corner. You're playing against the guys who are grinding. You're playing against the AHL guys, but the best AHL players essentially, if you think about it. Yeah. So. I, I think that's kind of the problem. If you think of Scott Lawton, he's excellent at that. Raffle also, mm-hmm. NAK, really good at that. But then you throw Bunham in, he's not necessarily like the best player in the yeah. AHL, you know? Um, and but, you throw so, Patrick into that role too, which he's not that type of player. Well, he's not, but to be honest with you, he actually he, he actually did excel it. though. He did ex- he is excelling in the role. It's just a shame. I just you know? I, He looks good in it. I just hate seeing him get like 10 minutes a night. Well, he's getting scored. That's going to not happen much anymore. I I do want to get into the press conference, but I don't think the lineup will continue the way it is. Actually, you know what? Let's just get into the press conference because there's so much to talk about there. And I want to start off with this. And and Chris, you already kind of hinted at it um, a little bit. This isn't the quote uh, that you want to mention, but Uh this is actually Charlie O'Connor tweeted this out. I think the makeup of our group is not right. I think it's a fair comment. I think we have to address I think we have to address that to get the right mix. Now, that is not a vote of confidence uh, from the general manager. That's Chuck Fletcher, by the way, saying that um, about the players that he's icing. He's clearly looking at it and reevaluating it. Here's what I will say. What changed? You lost Niskan. Again, I don't buy that. What I mean, changed? How can one guy affect an entire team? That's it, my point. It, it can to a degree, okay? To a degree. But a 9 nothing loss is not prevented by one player. No. It's that's a complete this, collapse. That's a one. Right. That's a com- complete collapse. And we can, we can jump on Phil Myers. We can jump on all these guys. But again, if I go back to those goals, I said this in the video I just released, the Gritty Rant video. If you go back to those goals, you will notice that the players are coming in with a ton of speed with not much resistance, and then Phil Myers gets beat. You know, first goal last night is a prime example of it. Yeah, 
He's beat and, along the wall. They come in two on one, pass over, score. Odd like, man rushes, like yeah. you mentioned. Just to go off that, and this is the quote from Fletcher that I wanted to mention. Sure. Um, we're not defending well as a five man unit, and we're not getting the same level of goal tang as last year. It said Monday night's game uh, is a formula that needs to be followed to be more successful. Notes the Flyers have given up 27 goals off the rush, most in the NHL. I mean, I, I could count like maybe six or seven in the last like two or three games. I mean, noticeable. Yeah. I bet. I bet you five of those probably came against the Rangers. At least probably. Yeah. But maybe more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, the last goal of the game, that was that even an odd man rush or the Flyers just not I stopped back? watching at 6 nothing. I can't, couldn't. I, I watched all of it. The entire nightmare. Until the I, last. I couldn't, I couldn't bear myself to watch the rest of that game. I, 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 I don't. I wouldn't know how it feels to be there in person. <laughs> just watching well, that. I mean, it, it, well, it was in New York, so I'm sure they were happy. Oof. <laughs> well, for us, we'd be we'd be dancing if we were in New York. We're like, oh my god, we're catching the Flyers. They're clearly not that good. Our team is better. We're not even fully healthy, and we're doing blah 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 blah. You know the narrative that they're telling themselves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and the constant narrative that Devils fans think Mackenzie Blackwood is better than Carter Hart. Yeah. yeah. People can tell themselves whatever they want. I'm not really that interested in it. I'm not either. I I, I also find it interesting that Fletcher said that he doesn't have the right mix, but yet you won't reference what you're missing. Yeah, because it's like... And you didn't make any moves in the offseason, so what is it that you think that you're missing? I think, I think would he be hinting that he's missing that demon? No, not to me. What do you think, Amadeo? What do, I'll say what I think afterwards. I mean, I feel like they're missing quite a few things. It's because when he was going through the press conference, like he also talked about like how their situation right now with the trade deadline, they're not going to be sellers yet. To, like in the situation that they're in. Mm-hmm. But I also remember Charlie O'Connor bringing up, I think it was Charlie O'Connor or Bill Meltzer brought up this type of scenario. And he kind of related it to the, the 06, 07 season where the yeah, Flyers technically built. were buyers and sellers at the trade deadline. And maybe who knows, maybe that could be the philosophy Chuck goes into with this trade deadline. You just don't know what he is going to do. Like, I know there was a lot of people that are pissed off at the press conference for Chuck's not going to give you every single answer on a script. He's going to be the basic GM talk. He's not going to give you everything. It's, it's standard management talk. They're not going to give you all the answers. He's going to give you your standard answers. And that's what he did. But honestly, I can, what Bill brought up, I can honestly see them maybe going on that buyer and a seller route, just maybe to shake up some things because not one guy br- being brought in is going to just fix what's happening right. with the team right now. Correct. Not it. It wouldn't fit. Now I could say it's, it, it can't, it'll help. It'll yeah. help, but it's a band aid, right? My, my a, thing is, is if the only way it helps is obviously the on ice play will, will be hopefully we hope would be somewhat better, but I think in the locker room, it would help out. Cause that's kind of what Braun talks about is like, well, that being that veteran that like well th- i don't mean to cut you off but i i like that was what i took from what chuck fletcher said yeah is that i don't think he's referencing again i talk about this talent i think he want. i would not be surprised if a veteran gets traded um you know maybe that's not an off-season thing but it seems to me like and i i i don't know what it would be i the, what like, I mentioned in the Gritty Rants video, and Jamie brought this up, was Scott Lawton. And it's not his fault in any in any sense, but he's a UFA. He has trade value. He's part of the core, whatever you want to call that. I hate that term. you know. But he's been here a long time. He's integrated with the team. He would be a shakeup to the locker room. And you can get a good return for him, especially if you package um, him up with a first-round pick and maybe a prospect. You could... I'm not saying you're going to get Ryan Ellis, but you can get a defenseman, a high-end defenseman. You could definitely get Ekholm for that type of package, mm-hmm. um, especially at a trade deadline. Like you saw what we got for Simmons, so the Lawton of first. That's a steal, you know. So, you know, I just don't, I just don't know. I just don't know what they're going to do. But it sounds to me like a locker room thing, and that's that's, that's, that's kind of what I think in. too. Because like, you got guys like Limblom that are fighting. Like to me, that's. I think that's more of a locker room I, issue. I, I don't agree. See, I 
I think that's incorrect. And my my buddy Greg said that the other day to me, and I I don't agree with it. Lin, we're thinking about we're babying Lindblom because of what happened to him because of his condition. I know, and even the player who was fighting him, I think, kind of waited for like an acknowledgement. Can you fight me? But the reality is, pre cancer, Lindblom is a big, strong left wing player. And but while that's not, sweet, that's not players, what I'm looking at though. I I get it that but, he went but it's through not all that. Crazy, but it's not crazy that a a two way in the corners type of guy would drop the gloves. I'm not know? saying it's crazy that he's fighting. I'm saying that there's other guys in the lineup like Carson Torinsky that could that he fight. Torinsky's not in the lineup. Torinsky was in that game. Yeah, but I mean, okay. Yeah, but, but why of all the guys, why is it Lindblom that's fighting? Is is my thing. Why not why not Lindblom though? Because I because there's other guys on this roster that I would rather see fight than Lindblom. If he's the one that's showing the I would th- I'd be okay like with that. any with any of them fighting, right? My my thing is I I I understand your point. Like I, maybe I want a guy dedicated to that, but I think there's nothing wrong with Lindblom fighting. I think it's great. I think it rallied the team. I think it's awesome. I think it's awesome to see that he had the confidence to do that. Yeah. That's how I see that. I, I just think they're two separate things. Like I don't have a problem with Limbaugh doing that. I understand people want more toughness, but that's a sign of it. I mean, just because you didn't get the player you wanted to do it, you know. I, I want to see something. Well, if I just Claude Giroux it. doing it, it, if Claude Giroux dropped the gloves, wouldn't that be highly effective? It would get everybody's attention. It should be. I, it w- I just don't know how it would it's affect everybody. Much. I'm down. It's, 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 speak up. I'm talking a lot. I'm talking too much and too fast. Hey, Chris and I get intense. And I think the same thing could be brought up too. Because remember, I think it was maybe a week and a half ago. It was against the Capitals when Drew got decked, and then Patrick and Voracek went over to go after the guy who decked him. And then people were getting mad that Patrick was the guy that was stepping up for his captain. I'm like, why are you getting mad at Patrick? He's stepping up for his captain. Yeah. I, I understand Patrick's not the ideal guy just because of the mind grain situation that he went through, but. I like the fact that he tried to step up for his teammate. And I know yeah, I do too. And I, and then Voracek came right over after. Yeah. And like, yeah, yeah also got Voracek stepping up for Patrick just in case something happens. But mm-hmm. Voracek will always do that. He'll take a bad penalty all the time for, yeah. for that type of stuff. It, it, the funny thing is we seem to ship out the guys who used to do that, you know, like Scott Hartnell. Right. And that's, that's a little bit of Ron Hextall there wanting the discipline, very disciplined type of guy. And I think that's why Hartnell was moved immediately. You know, I don't think it had anything to do with his skill level or his contract. I think they also wanted to tank at that time. I don't think the, I. I don't think tanking. I, I don't think they were interested in tanking. Well, that was it, well. That was it, before it, the fourteen fifteen season when they, they looked Ed like Snyder they was, were just trying to be bad. Ed Snyder well, was still around. Ed Snyder would never accept the tank. No, I yeah, think they, that's that's where the issue came in. But you have to realize, Umberger pre his back injury, like earlier in their career, he was just as good as Scott Hartnell. I mean, oh, he was yeah, very, he was, he was a very good player, league, wasn't he? No, it was it was a very good two way player. He was one of, he had a monumental playoffs for us, like healthy pre all that stuff. You wouldn't have been like, oh, why would you make? You'd be like, okay, I got a guy who's more versatile, who can play center, can play wing, can play anywhere in my bottom. So he's exactly what we need today. Actually, he'd be fantastic. He's physical. He was good around the net. Um, but now we're looking for guys like Scott Hartnell, you know, ironically. And I feel like there's like a lot of other people that just like, I know they, they describe it. Like, oh, we don't want a goon. We, we, we just want this guy. That's just play in the bottom six. It, like, like you're talking about what Ryan Reeves, there's, there's like, like you, there's like people that I'm seeing that they want Tom Wilson. Tom Wilson's don't grow on trees. No, you don't Tom get Wilson a guy that's top line every night. Yeah, you don't yeah. get a guy that's that physical. It can also pot 20 to 25 goals. Yeah. A year. No, yeah. He's a rare combination. You, you'd have to, that's why Blake Coleman had such a pretty, you know, a hefty return. Yeah, yeah. Barkley Goodrow. Yeah. It's why these guys, the, the reality is though, is we don't need a guy to play in our top six to do any of no. that. Um, no. What we what we could use clearly are some more voices on that bench and in that locker room. And instead of Bunneman speaking up, we need it. You know, like maybe even Derek Grant or Nate Thompson. You know, we we don't talk about him, but Nate, nasty Nate. I mean, that guy was a worker. He was a workhorse. Definitely was always calm. Mm-hmm. And like we have these kids. Like you see what's happening with Phil. Meyer. I mean, listen, you guys are younger than I am, right? Amadeo, you're younger than I am as well. Chris, you're obviously younger, right? Like. They get rocked. Stuff happens in life. Like I can't imagine what it's like to sit in that nine game loss. It's terrible for us. Imagine how it feels for them. There's no way they wanted to lose and continue to get pummeled. They just, they're just not ready as a unit. That's where I'm like, I get that they're not blaming the coaching staff and all that, but at the same time, in my gut, I'm like, 
Why are they so unprepared for this right now? And I don't I just, like firing coaches. I'm not. No, I like, don't either. Because I, I think, because I think everybody had a good enough year last year to where you kind of give them the benefit of a doubt, right? But it's not just last year. Look, we're not the only ones who said this. You look at around the league, people are like, yeah, the Flyers are legit. Yeah. We are yeah. legit. That's what I'm yeah. saying. What's happening? Now, we could go on a 10-game win streak, and I know that sounds impossible to people, but we've seen that the uh, worst versions of this team do that yeah. with Dave Haxtell's coach. The 16 17 I'm not saying it's gonna happen. Game win streak. I'm just not I'm not saying it's gonna happen, you know. I wouldn't I wouldn't bet on it. But this team has been Jekyll and Hyde, and I think that's what Fletcher's referring to. Where does yeah. that come from? But why does it why does it come when it enters our locker room? Like Gustafson comes here, he's inconsistent. It's like, what are we talking about here? Who it's not Claude Giroux. I, I don't want to hear that. It's that's no, I'm so tired. Every it's game it's not Giroux. Lose, it's I hear not something Curry. about Giroux and the C and this and that. He texts me. I would say there's not enough of him. Yeah, he 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 texts me last night. He's like, "Did your dad say anything about Drew yet?" I sent him a screenshot right away. Like it's 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 just, it, oh my god! It was dur- it was during one of the plays where Drew whiffed on the one timer. I was just like, "Okay, someone definitely said strip to see after that." Right? <laughs> because <he> whiffed. <laughs> well, I, another quote from last night. I, th- I think not a quote, direct quote here, but I'll just go off of. Uh, I'm gonna go off of. Um, Jamie Basquez's list a little bit here, but if you guys want to add quotes around this, you know, feel free. But he did mention something about Sam Moran, how he thinks he's going to get back in there. Um, has any ready pace of play? I think that it's true. I'm I'm fine with that. I just want to see him as a defenseman. I don't want to see him used the way he's being used. Maybe I'm wrong, but didn't he go down to Lehigh Valley and was like one of their best defensemen? He's night? been playing D. I mean, yeah. again, I've said this for a while. He was already done developing in the AHL. He was a borderline NHL player. He arguably, in my opinion, made the team over Haig. I would have picked him over Haig back in the day. They went with Haig. Okay. Morin got injured. It is what it is. And now, you know, they're saying he can't get back. I, I'm hoping long-term he comes back on D. But he probably can bring some of that physical edge. Having said that, he hasn't done that in the NHL. And I, and I want to say that, and this is kind of what I want to talk about too, and I've talked about this with Curtis Gabriel, that – if we want tough guys, they can't be young. They're not going to be kids on your team. These old men that nobody likes, those are your tough guys. They got to be like mid 20s at least and up, you know, and I older than more. And I would say even Curtis Gabriel just the other day, you know, he's fighting Ryan Reeves. How old's Ryan Reeves? He's he's not a young man. I think he's in they, his 30s. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, listen, I'm in my 30s. It, when you're in your 20s, guys in your 30s are more intimidating. They're just without a doubt. They're, and they're less intimidated by you, for, for sure. Like, a 20-year-old is less intimidated to, to Chris. It's just how it works. A 40-year-old looks at me, 50-year-old. You know, it's just the reality. So we need, and I think that is gettable in a trade. That's gettable this year. We don't have to give up a ridiculous... They a hockey trade. They don't need a... I think the big move is what you wait for the summer, right? Yeah. I definitely think that's coming with his statement as well. Because, like... It's going to happen everywhere with expansion. Because that's the thing, and everybody, like, I think everybody kind of makes it like it's, oh, well, it's not a big deal. We've heard this for this long. I'm like, well, you know, it is a big deal because you're you're risking a lot if you make that move now, and it's most likely going to hurt you more because you you could do this in, like... The amount they could lose if they do this move, this move now, they could unprotect Myers right and potentially lose him. Yes. Then they could, or they could still protect Myers and then give up whatever they gave up a for forward. that player and lose that player. Then. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, people have they not could considered lose a forward if they go a different route. If it's the four four again, this is this is why I brought up Scott Lawton or whatever. Cause, yeah, because he's not being protected anyway. Right and. And my thing is this: I think they wait and they have to do the seven three one, because yeah, that's why. Absolutely. Like, because that's why when I look at you risk losing too that, many players. Yeah, because I look at the things that Fletcher said a while ago that, in Seattle and mine. I'm like, it makes it all makes sense now. It yeah, it, it. Some of it didn't make sense. They're, when it was they're going to protect Patrick. It's not a question. I know people will want to bring it up well, as a question. He's, he's already exempt because of his age. Oh, okay, good. I, I don't know the rules. I'll be honest. Yeah. I looked at the rules several it's, times, and I keep getting 23 wrong. Twenty-three and under are already. Exactly. Oh, it is twenty-three and under. I thought yeah. it was games played. Sorry, yeah, I'm I, day. Go ahead. 
I think also it determines on what type of contract you're on. I think for Fairby, since he's still on his ELC, he's exempt from the expansion draft, even though he's played a yeah, ton that, of games. That Frost, is, Frost is exempt. I'm trying to think of other guys who could be exempt. I, I know Patrick is exempt from the expansion draft, but I can't That's, that was my assumption as well. I I wonder if NAK. I don't think NAK is. No, he's on a no. contract. Yeah, NAK is not right. Haig will not be like these are the guys we have. Braun. And Braun, yeah, I mean Braun could get taken, but I don't think so. No, I don't either. He's just one that will be. Exempt. I I think realistically, like the guys, we're we're at risk to lose. I know it sounds crazy. People ghost. We're at. I I actually don't think Ghost has played that poorly. I don't, I don't even agree with Av's comment from I the other day. That. But having said that, I don't have footage on what is happening. So we do have to, you know, we have to give them the benefit of the doubt that maybe Ghost is making mistakes previously to that, or they're telling him to do stuff that he's not doing, yeah. you know? Because my thing on Ghost is like, it, it, it doesn't really matter if he's playing like that bad defensively. Everybody's been bad defensively. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't think like a three game reset on a guy who's arguably been your best, your easily your top two um, offensive defensemen. I mean, him and him and Sanheim are, are, have been the two guys that seem like they like to, you know, get into the play a lot. And Sanheim has been the guy that just, he joins the rush a lot. It's just, he struggles with the, the finish sometimes. Yeah. And here's a quote from Chuck Fletcher to add to that uh, with, with young players, there will be ups and downs. It's a year. It's a year we have to be careful and overanalyzing results. Um, and yeah, it sounds like. Listen, I agree with him a hundred percent. There, anybody who watches any of my content, you already know that every single young player on this team already has my benefit of the doubt. And I in no way go, oh, move this guy because he's been bad over this period of time. But it does sound like he is surprised, right? I mean, we're surprised because we I mean, looked I, at I as contenders. So, I mean, we, we were looked at as contenders going into this year. So, I'm sure I, everybody's surprised. Well, I wonder what kind of pressure they're receiving. You know, I mean, there's obviously a lot because of the, obviously the fans demand a lot, and yep. you know, and I think it's just like, I think they're. I don't know if they probably don't even care about this, but like there's probably more pressure like on, I wouldn't even say like it's on us. It's just more on like, there's just pressure from everybody because it's been so long. You know what I mean? Like they probably yeah. don't even care. But Who doesn't care? Like Fletcher and them. Like, like they, like, I don't, I don't, I don't know how to describe Comcast it. cares. Dude, you know, care, the playoffs yeah. is a lot of money lost. Yeah, I realized he didn't. He didn't make any big moves. His big move was a three million dollar investment in a player that's barely playing. Well, he hasn't done anything since. Uh, he hasn't done any big moves since June of nineteen. But again, that assuming that the team was going to be good, that was a really smart financial move. Yeah, that's why he's doing this. And I think what I'm hoping is that Comcast recognizes that. They're like, yeah, I'm. We recognize this is a weird year, and if we apply certain pressure onto him, we're gonna make a bad move because things are not working out the way we want, and we're gonna try to, you know. But I don't know if Comcast actually thinks like that. You know what I'm saying? That's what scares me with Comcast is the ownership. Just yeah. because uh, we've been through what it's been eight years now since the team has been one year miss, one year make the playoffs, one year miss, one year make the playoffs. That's what scares me with Comcast that the okay, this has been going on for too long. We gotta bring in actual people that are gonna make help us make the playoffs consistently or something like that. That's what I, I'm afraid of about Comcast. I, I mean, do, do we agree that a move is definitely coming? Yes. Hundred yeah. percent. Okay. I would agree. I think it's just I don't think it's coming now. I think it's the summer. No, I mean for the trade deadline. Oh, trade yeah. deadline specifically. Yeah. They're uh -huh. making a move at the trade deadline. Of some yes. of some side. Now the question is: The will it be a substantial deal? My my thought is no, but I think it will be like a mid tier guy, like maybe like it, a Dennis it's Savard. It's going to be a hockey trade. It's going to be one that like both teams kind of get on. You know, I I hope Scott Lawton's not traded, but he, I would not be surprised. I think they're not going to go heavy at the trade deadline. I I more think they're just going to go after that just extra depth piece that you can add to the defensive core that they can just play in the top four or something like that. And you focus on the major moves when it comes to after the expansion draft. That's when you focus on maybe, that. Maybe like, 
I don't know. I'm thinking it's probably going to be a, t- I agree. I think it'll be a top four defenseman. That's probably going to be a UFA after this year. I think it's what, whatever they grab, they don't want to protect it. No, no. And, and they don't want it's it. going to be like, I could see like Savard from Columbus. That's why people are going to be upset. It's not going to be the move that you guys want. And it's no. not going to be a guy who's going to come in and be better than it's Savard. not going to be at home or Ellis. It, it, no. Well, there's, there's a good chance that whoever we even bring in, that after it's all said and done, Phil Myers rebounds his game, Sandheim rebound their game, and all of a sudden that guy's yeah. playing in the bottom pairing. Yeah. You know, it, it's possible. I mean, we trade a second and a third for Justin Braun, who's playing in our bottom pairing last year. And most of us would have, I mean, myself included, would have let him walk if Niskanen was around. Yeah, bro. I don't even think Braun was in our plans and until he Niskanen clearly was in retired. Chuck Fletcher's plans. Well, yeah, regardless. because he knew about it. Yeah. Well, I think the locker room thing that we don't yeah. notice. We were not in there at all. Yeah. And I think, I think, too, because he was, he got re signed the same day Niskan retired. It was like 20 minutes later he was re signed. Well, officially yeah. re signed. I think, I think it's just the announcement. Yeah. It was lined up by P. I think it's a PR thing. I don't think it has anything yeah, to do yeah. with Fletcher. Yeah. I agree. Because that, that was probably figured out like a long time ago. Yeah. 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 Just Fletcher's cause... just working the deal. Yeah, because yeah. when you make that, when you make both of those moves to get Niskanen and Braun, when you lose Niskanen, you can't lose Braun for you, nothing. You yeah, no. you can't. Because because at the time they they would have just lost two of their best defensive penalty killers, so you didn't really want to lose that at that time. Yeah, but I, you know, I am disappointed he didn't go out and get more. I mean, there were other guys available. Maybe there was an issue though with travel and COVID. All of these things we don't know, right? Like. TJ Brody was a guy I was very interested in. He went, but again, he stayed in Canada. A lot of these guys stayed in the country that they were in or around where they're from. He also got the no movement clause. Right. That's a good point. Toronto. Chris. Yeah. And we're not getting, see, that's the thing. We're not given any of this stuff. No. Toronto doesn't have a defenseman that they want to cling on to, really. I mean, Riley? outside of Riley. Mm, well, could you argue Muzzin? Sure, but I mean they've like they don't have the three guys who are clearly defined, you know, no, yeah. who are our future. And now, I mean, I wonder if that makes them question. Like, I don't think it would, you know, because that's where I take that quote from that he's kind of saying, "Hey, I'm not like moving Phil Myers." Yeah, you could thing, because I, I can't now. see that. Can you imagine know. if Chuck Fletcher flipped like Phil Myers in a first for Drew Doughty or something like that? <laughs> I don't know how that, I feel about that. Actually, that would be that's the question. Robbery. That would make that would make Comcast really happy, wouldn't it? And honestly, to wait, Robbie for who? To go all, or for us? If we got down really? for Myers, oh yeah, 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 I'm sorry, that's insane. We'd have, to, I mean, um, they're probably we'd have to add more than that. That would just yeah. be the, the like the workaround. Kind of, that's a franchise defenseman. Yeah, but like to go off of, uh, it's not that far off the though. picks. Um, this is a tweet from uh, Bill Meltzer. Fletcher said some GMs prefer to focus on acquiring 2022 draft picks because of the limited oh, yeah. viewings in many leagues this season. Um, yeah. Others see opportunity in volume of picks for 2021 because there could be future pros uh, who are hard to rate based on on uh, the season. Yeah. And I think I mean, that's I- the one thing with this draft too. I don't think – it's it's hard to judge just because not many leagues are playing. Like you got collegiate hockey playing, yeah. right? It, in the juniors, isn't it only the, the Q and the WHL playing? The OHL hasn't even played yet. The, C, right. the OHL, the CHL, they're playing in the AHL. A lot of those guys yeah, are playing yeah, in the AHL. Still down there. Yeah, so but those mainly, guys are drafted. Those guys have ELCs. Yeah, so if you're looking at guys for like this year, you're mainly looking at like guys like a college or even overseas type of guys. Like if you're looking at or, juniors, it's still like or, Okay, I've been saying, Chris, you know this. I've been saying this for a while. I anticipated this already, that this draft would be an absolute disaster of a draft. Having said that, you have guys out there that scouts have seen over the years, but maybe they were 15 at the time, 16. You know, maybe they're a little too young. They haven't seen them for a year, so now they have to kind of guesstimate. We're going to probably see some really weird draft results. So at the same time, like I kind of want to keep my picks because if you have a guy that's probably supposed to be maybe even a top 10 pick, but for some reason it's taken at 30 because nobody's seen him play for a year, you know, but he grew, you know, he grew like five inches and, you know, 20 pounds, you know, just working out at home. We don't know. We don't know this stuff. So I do think it's going to be weird results with the draft. So, but I also think at the same time that it reduces the value of picks because 
your first round pick is not as reliable. Yeah. And that's why I kind of think that that's why the, the market's so hard to move. Like they talked about because yeah. like they'd so be more valuable, things. but you know, no one really looks at the draft like that now because of everything going on. And, you know, I mean, some of these kids haven't played in God knows how long. So um, it's, it's tough. Yeah. I'm trying to look at like mock draft stuff right now. And a lot of the guys I'm seeing are from college or over in Europe. Cause you got with this mock draft, this is not like if it says like Buffalo got the first overall pick, they would pick Owen power from Michigan. And then second overall, you would get someone from the SHL. Like I haven't seen anyone in this mock top 10 or whatever that is in junior hockey at all. Maybe one guy that's in the OHL. The only ones that I remember are like college. It was power. Um, Baneers, Kent Johnson, I think was one. And those I would are assume just, that, that's just Michigan alone it, from watching. Any York. of those lists are going to be incredibly flawed. I would essentially wait for Bob McKenzie's list, which is at least based off of NHL that's scouts. The only list I so love at least they'll give us a, a, a thought of what they're. Th- well, no, no, I'm saying, and look, it's not that these sites don't know what they're talking about at all about these players. But I'm saying, I'll give us a thought process of what the NHL teams are thinking. Oh yeah, I think yeah. a little bit. You know, like, are they going with the consensus? Are they, are they, because they're going to reevaluate players now. They're going to have to try to get creative. They're going to make a bunch of phone calls. They're going to talk to people. They're going to talk to their coaches. What are they doing? What are they eating? What are they, you know, you're going to be drafting guys. It's going to be a weird year. It's going to be a weird, weird, weird draft year. And um, I think we can benefit from that uh, because we don't need anything. So we just keep our picks and, you know, it's kind of lottery, but we can, it, it, there's a good chance that a lot of those guarantees think, will leak. You think there's any way when the draft comes, they maybe move something like around that time? I think it depends how we finish, man. I don't know. Yeah. Did you guys expect this? I didn't expect this. No, no. We were we were contenders, right? Like, yeah. I didn't. I said expect I'd say that the, I said that they'd run away with the division. I, I didn't both expect did. <laughs> that the team couldn't play D. No, because it's it's the same system. Yes, like it's, it's the same thing. It's it nothing really that's, changed. That's why I don't understand that right mix thing. The only I thing I think of is a locker room thing. You know I, that there's just know. not enough. There's not enough veteran presence. Yeah, and there isn't. There isn't. Uh, definitely not in the bottom six, and not um, not, on the, not on the D, and not on the D. Correct. Right. You put a lot of pressure wrong. on those kids. Yeah, and that, and he's. Go ahead. You continue, Chris. He, he's he's been the guy that said that he's kind of been doing what the veterans would do if they had another one. Who? What do you? Who said oh, that? Charlie O'Connor had a oh yeah a picture of what he said, and he said like he kind of have to just tell them like you know we we got games coming up and everything. I, I don't remember the exact thing, but it's kind of just like how you approach the the young kid, yeah, as the veteran, and like they, they only have one guy that's doing that, and like. Well, Well, it's like, it's okay. So when you're younger, a loss or a goal, it's blown up. You know, the veterans, they can, they can, they can bring down the value of each goal. You know, they could be like, yeah, it's just another play. I've done this a thousand times. The younger player, he's like, I haven't done this a thousand times. Every mistake gets blown up. And I don't think we have enough of that balance in the locker room. And you see guys like G and Voracek, they always, oh, dude, doesn't matter. They can have a bad game. The fat, last 10 minutes, they're on. You know what I mean? Every time a kid will just have a bad game and just the entire game will be bad. You know what I mean? Um, Phil Myers, I mean, he has yet to get his footing. I will say this. He's looked better of late, you know? In small squirts, but and I also uh, I, think guys that are also being affected in styles like that, guys like Connect Me, he's still. I think people need to f- remember that he's still very young. Oh and yeah, the people still, seem to completely ignore that, and he's still very prone to getting yeah. in his own head about yes. just him not playing up to his expectations. Because if you look at years past, okay, his rookie season, it, it was a decent rookie season. Then the next year, he got put on the first line with G and Coots. Played well, second same year. Well, when well. they play, when they play well, he plays well. Yeah, yeah. He, we don't have the guy who does it all by himself. Unfortunately, we don't have Connor McDavid. We have Couturier who can kind of do that, but we had G who did, did that in his prime. Night. Yeah, and we they have moments of that, but the idea they're going to do it every night. I mean, it's no. Even if you do have that, you're still going to lose. When the Flyers are going, everybody's going. Right. Yeah. It's not like you're not like, picking players apart. 
like a guy who's we've been, I think has gotten a lot of crap this year has been Hayes. And you can tell he's frustrated. Yeah, mm-hmm. he I mean, definitely is. He, he's trying to do everything out there because he could last year. And that was one of his big things. He did everything. Yeah. He was amazing on the penalty kill, easily their best forward penalty killer. Um, and that's and that's no knock at Coots. That was just how good Hayes was. Um I didn't think he was easily the best penalty killer, but I did think he was really good. I, I think at times he would look damn good. I mean, yeah, no, I mean, absolutely. And it's not, again, it's something against Coots. It's just the way Hayes, I think the, some so of the things good. Hayes did were it's, just it's incredible. The short, it's the shorthanded goals that he scored. <laughs> He had. Four, I mean, the amount of Excellent times he would hand. hold off guys with the puck protection is yeah. insane. Um, but I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like there's a lot of times where he, he just doesn't shoot. Like, and I know it's like the the, the stupidest thing because everybody makes fun of the people who like scream shoot at the yeah. games and everything, like on the power play and stuff. But oh my god, some of these times he is wide open for a shot but, and he's uh, waiting, 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 waiting. Outside of Joel Farabee, I mean, can you say that about majority of players on this team? Yes. That's what I'm seeing. When I see it in everybody, I go, okay, I agree. I can criticize him for that. Yeah. I can also criticize 20 other guys. So it, when I, and fortunately, yeah, like I do. We want to pick apart these one guys, but we've seen when they've done the opposite. Like you just said, I know you weren't like saying that he stinks or anything. No. But when I see it happening in bursts, I assume that it's a team problem. Because if it's happening to a guy, I know they can do it. And all of a sudden he can't do it. Nobody else can do it. It's, It's not just one guy. Like that's been the thing all year. Like, I don't know. I, I and that's why I mentioned the broken record record thing because I sound like one because I say the same thing every video. Nolan Patrick is team still, defense. Is Nolan terrible. Patrick has not played on this team when this team has played well yet. No. No, he hasn't. <laughs> he missed the entire season where this team played like on fire. Yeah. <laughs> and when he came in, they were bad and yeah. then had another bad year and then was hurt and the other bad again. Yeah. <laughs> I thought about that. And the, the one thing I want to ask you two guys is it's um, I want to get your thoughts on this. So one's about the, the new draft lottery set up and also the Elliot three Elliot Friedman's thoughts on how he thinks Ryan Ellis should be in a flyers uniform, like his opinion on that. So okay. uh, first let's talk about Ryan Ellis. So Yuri, what what do you think about Ryan Ellis? Like, what do you think about Elliot Friedman's uh, comments there? I mean, I agree with his overall sentiment. He's definitely the type of guy we're looking for. He's definitely a guy Chuck Fletcher would covet. I would covet him. I would trade a lot more than I would for Ekholm to get him. Um, and he is a guy that I would consider if I like if I move Phil Myers. He's a guy I would move Phil Myers for because he's a guy. I'm like, okay, I'm losing Phil Myers, but I am getting a guy who's older, who can compliment Provrov, who will be here for several years. I, I think he's excellent. I like him. Having said that, I don't think Nashville is looking to move him. Um, and I think we'd have to overpay to get him. Uh, and I'm not that interested in doing that. But that is the type of defenseman we need overall, in my opinion. To go to go off that, Freeman was the one who came out and said that he was an untouchable. Or no, it was LeBron, actually. LeBron said that he was him, Rene, and Yossi were untouchables from Nashville. So I don't know how that's going to work. I look at it as just as Elliot's opinion and that he obviously knows the Flyers have had interest in that call and I'm sure they've knocked it Ellis too. There's that's, no way they haven't. So, Well, okay, let, let's assume that Ek, uh, that Eklund is... And again, I'm not even saying he's lying. Let's say Eklund's rumor, right? The one uh, that first in Patrick, that name was thrown around the room. Why was that name thrown around the room? Because everybody doesn't like Patrick and everybody... No, because... Gone. No, because Nashville goes, okay, well, we want Echo, we want Patrick in a first. And we go, ha, 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 I want Ryan Ellis in a first for Patrick in a first. Like, yeah. that's that's how I imagine most of this conversation panned out, and then the conversation ends. And then we never – and that's a rumor. Those are rumors. And that's why I'm like, these aren't trades. These aren't yeah. trades. It's like NHL 21. Yes. Now – I really like Ryan Ellis, but again, why would they move him? He's, it's like, I'm not, he's I, would been, love, well, I mean, he's been there for forever and he's like, he's easily their second best defenseman. Like that, that's a clear one too, right there. I, I brought this up to you, Chris, the other day and I'm a day. I didn't talk to you about this, but 
you you should remember this. Sean Couturier, again, I'm going to bring this up again. Sean Couturier was on the trade block. Again, you can go back to Eklund's site. These trade rivers were there. It was Sean Couturier because the Flyers needed a defenseman and he was on the fourth line and he was a disappointment and a bust and he just wasn't good enough and you could trade him for a bag of pucks. Him and Braden Shen, who now got us a player who, by the way, might be a franchise player or at least a superstar. Uh, and Sean Couturier was supposedly already traded for Malcolm or uh, for uh, PK Subban. I think it was Couturier and a first for Subban, by the way, which... If you can't see the pattern in that, you know, that how it's just recycled garbage over and over again, maybe I'm wrong, but that's what it seems like to me, that it's the typical narrative of we need a defenseman, package up the, the big name prospect that has disappointed. Yeah, in a and, first everybody, round pick. and everybody wants gone. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's what I mean when I say that. It's like everybody wants Patrick gone. Everybody wants him to fail. Yeah. I don't, I don't think there's... There's a small group of people, I think, in this city and including the the media too, that just want him to to fail. Or, it or to, feels to like that at times. Media. Yeah, like it. It's insane. Yeah, I don't. I just don't get it. Well, let's let's take a brief moment here to. I want to talk about three young players, but first, I want to talk about Carter Hart. Um, let's take a, a quick quote here, uh, Carter. Carter's a young guy. He had some success last year. This year, he hasn't played the same level. There's no question that he struggled, particularly this month, Chuck Fletcher. Now, not a very telling statement. It's nothing we don't know. Um, no. I think most of his problems are exacerbated by the fact that this team can't play defense um, collectively. So but he hasn't looked the same. I'm just going to say this, and I've said it over and over again. When you see Carter Hart struggle, just remind yourself he's not supposed to be here yet. So it doesn't help you to cry and be like, he's not that it is. Ir- these are irrelevant statements. You're watching a player develop. It is what it is. Yeah. If you, if you go back to the, um, the eighties, Pelly Lindbergh first year came up. He was great. Second year. He sucked. He got sent that back down to the AHL. There you go. And he yeah. was, I think, I think he, didn't he win a Vesna? Yeah. He, he won a Vesna the next yeah. year, didn't he? Yes. Yep. It's great like, example. I, I'll, <laughs> I'm going to say this. I don't look at Hart and I'm not I'm not worried about the kid. There's there's no reason to be worried. He he again, he's not even as you said, he's not even supposed to be here and half of the goals that he gives up that you probably sit there and say, "Oh, Hart, you should have had that one." I could say, "Oh, well, this guy shouldn't have done this or that guy shouldn't have done that before the puck was even in the area where the guy scored." Like last night, right? I'm watching that third goal develop as I'm sitting there. I'm like, Myers, just flip it around the wall. Just flip it around the wall. I said it to my girlfriend that's sitting next to me. I said, all he's got to do here is flip it around the wall. What happens? Scoops it the other way, send in front, and they score. Yeah, man. And, like, And everybody's like, oh, Hart probably could have had that one. I'm like, no. Myers shouldn't have turned it over in the first place. Yeah. All he had to do, if he picks his head up and looks this way and shoots it up the glass on his forehand, that's out of the zone, and they go out the other way on a breakout. Yeah. Or it's not as you know a and, high quality well, chance. And then don't you see a lot of that where it's just simple plays? It, it's the them? simplest things. They have no structure. So then how do you? That that's why I can't jump on the goalie. That's why like I no. haven't even reacted to Carter Hart's performance. I don't either because uh, it was like you know I could see what people are saying. It's like oh well maybe he could have had that one. I'm like all right maybe he could have had that one. And then I kind of would watch it more. I'm like. Yeah, the defense is just too bad to where I could even say anything about. Hart. He could, he could be playing a lot better. He could he could help steal yeah. some and, games. And one more thing, when to go off that, they didn't give up as many shots last year and quality chances as they did. They I think they averaged a nightmare. I think it was twenty three shots they gave up, and like that's that's not much. And when they did give up a a, a you know bad chance or a great chance for the other team. They got unbelievable saves, and because he didn't have to make that many crazy saves. I mean, how I mean, many? He had a saves? lot. Of, he had a lot last year. Yeah, and that's what I mean. Like, like it was, yeah. but it was, it was a small amount of time. Like it wasn't much, right? To where it was like a big thing. So I don't know. I I don't blame Hart for any of it. And I, I think Moose is a guy too, where it's like obviously we see like the more you play him, the more he'll just kind of he just kind of deflates a little bit because he just kind of gets overworked. Yeah, so, and and I, I love how people get like so worried about like when they'll 
call up Lyon and they'll put him in for like as backup. backup. And everybody's like, well, what's the matter with Hart? I'm like, and I, I did this off. once because I didn't know that they did this. And I was texting you or even I was like, well, what's up with Hart then? Because it was the one night he struggled. And I'm like, is he hurt? I'm like, he's not hurt. And I didn't know that they did this at the time where they give guys the full day off because Toronto's done it a handful of times with Anderson this year. Well, it's a very condensed schedule yeah, this year. Right. Yep. And I didn't know anybody did that. And I was like, he's not hurt, is he? And then you're like, no, don't be worried about it. I was like, yeah. So, <laughs> uh, you know, there's it's it's just weird how people do that. Like today they, called, they sent Lyon down and they called up uh, Sandstrom. So it's it's gonna be these are all these are all cap these, uh, all the re- these are all cap impl- implications. Yeah, They're just struggling yeah. around money to save every dollar. Yeah, exactly. And I remember reading something too. It says like by the trade deadline, the Flyers could have around six and a half million in cap because of all yeah. this cap flexibility that they're doing with sending guys up and down from the taxi squad and yeah. everything like that. Yeah, and I I would hope that the Flyers could take advantage of that. And that maybe that's what Chuck Fletcher is waiting for. He did mention that P, that cap. See, cap space seems to be the biggest thing, and if we yeah. can take on even money, because we have the money. Wasn't you know, it like we can one take of the first the things he said was like it's hard to trade term and money right now? Yes. Like one of the yeah. first quotes I saw. Uh, we're certainly not looking at selling right now, but more aggressive. But teams are looking to take on dollars. Teams, not many teams are looking to take on dollars or term. Mm. Yeah, when you're stuck in a flat cap world. COVID, you got to, and also you got to think of when you're training guys and expansion. You got to think of when you're training for guys, those guys got to go through quarantine for at least a week. So you're missing those guys for at least three, four games. Realistically, I was kind of like hesitant. Like now it wouldn't even make sense if they got at home because you have to be what another two weeks with the problems that we're dealing with. Realistically, the smartest bet is to wait and make your deals in the off season. Yeah. After expansion, you're going to have salary cap cleared out. You're going to find out what player's gone. You won't have to worry about protecting or and, or no trade clauses anymore. Because maybe you could sign the big name to a no trade clause now if you need to. And you don't have to worry about expansion. You know, you're like, I'm going to hold this guy anyway. I don't care. You know, like uh, like a John Tavares, right? All right. So we're getting close, but I do want to talk about two more young players. And I don't have the exact quote in front of me. I don't know if you can find it, but uh, Tanner Lazinski and Wade Allison. Fletcher mentioned both of them as possible call-ups. I've mentioned them for a while. We've all mentioned them for a while. Injuries have been an issue. Having said that, lazinski has been healthy. He's been playing pretty well, getting better and better. Actually, I would say close to dominant now as they're adjusting to the AHL. And you could look at somebody like Wade Allison, who's played two goals and has three points with two goals and one assist. I don't think that's a fluke. And I think Wade Allison is too good to be playing in the AHL. Just injuries have held him back. Um, Amadeo, let's go to you on this one first. What do you think about, um, one, Chuck Fletcher kind of acknowledging it in the media as those being the two guys, and do you see them getting called up soon? Yeah, I think those are ideally the two guys you would maybe want to look at more just because they're older type of guys. They came right out of college in their last year. Yeah, and granted, they have been hit with the injury bug, sadly, to start off this season and also with Wade Allison, just his unluckiness with his injuries. And honestly, if he didn't get injured so much, I personally thought he would have got signed his ELC after his second year of college. Like, cause yep. that's how high my hopes were for him because I just liked his skill set. And for what you saw down the AHL with him, just so like, if you look at this, the goals he scored, like just look at the snipes that he did. It's just, wow. Like, like that's his, yeah. Like, I'm not saying he's going to be 50 goal score. No, I don't think that's the possibility. Like, if you could get a good guy that can maybe come up and just pot some goals consistently, maybe Wade Allison could provide a spark. Yeah, and he's a goal scorer, and he's physical, and he's got size. Chris, what do you, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think both of them. Um, it, it, I think if they both weren't injured, they probably would have made the team out of camp, to be honest with you. I think we would have saw them for a little bit there. Um, instead of Bunneman, you think? Yeah, I, I honestly Lezinski. thought we would have saw Lexinski instead of Bunneman if he wasn't hurt. Because he had the, was it was it rib? I can't remember. I don't remember exactly off the top of my head. Either. Yeah, I, I, I think it might have been rib. He was out like four weeks. Or that might have been Ratcliffe. I can't remember. But he was out for, <laughs> I, think, yeah. I think, a month. Um 
And again, I thought for a while that Allison was one of the the better prospects we were kind of waiting for, but he was just riddled with injury. Um, and I remember when they signed Lagzinski, and I, I was excited for that too because I kind of figured like it, it just reminded me of like another kind of law in where it's like he's a good, effective player that's got a great shot. Um, when I saw him up when I went when I went and covered the Phantoms game for you guys, um, he was he looked like one of the best Phantoms that night. He was all over it. He, he I don't even think I don't think he recorded a point, but he looked really good. Kind of coincides with that trading Scott Lawton thing that I was talking yeah, about. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, yeah. that's why, like, I, I've thought about it. Like, they got a lot of guys that's just like, if they lose them, it's like, eh, whatever, you know? Well, it, we, we, we shouldn't have that attitude as we know that is not yeah. true, yeah. you know, because it's very rare that we're not always certain that that guy can play that role. Like, it took Scott Lawton to get, like, again, people gave up on Scott Lawton a while ago, right? People Remember the last expansion? Show. Well, the last expansion, people didn't even think he was worth protecting. You know, he was obviously worth protecting. Yeah, yep. but it does seem it does seem like Wade Allison could be legit help for this team, and maybe Nak ends up sitting. Yeah, because I think it's just like I think he's kind of growing going through like the growing pains too. Nak, because there's been a couple times where it's like he looks like too aggressive and like maybe takes a penalty or like. You know what I mean? Like he he's had a couple games where he just looks iffy, and I think it's just they're they're all just really young. Yes, and I think that's the right mix too that Fletcher's talking about. It's disappointing to hear though because it makes me feel like I don't know if I'm going to invest much in this team for this season when I hear yeah. that. Like I don't know if we have the right mix, mix and we have to address that. Yeah. You know, I think he's kind of putting on the players. I'm going to evaluate you by the end really of the year. And, on, though, isn't it right now? I mean, does it matter? Well, I mean, he came out and took the blame. Well, I mean, he said it's my, his fault, but he also his fault by what? Not putting the right players on the ice, making the wrong assumptions. I mean, I feel like that's kind of what he yeah, said. But that's what I mean, though. I think it's like I think it's on them now. Like, I I can't. I I don't know who who to blame. Well, I think they're all they're all everyone. partially. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think it's, all I was just gonna say, I think it's everybody. It's yeah, part of for, it. unfortunately, that when it's like this, look, yeah. if this was Hextall's seventh year and they started collapsing this way, you know, people would be screaming to fire Hextall. So, yeah. people uh, were screaming to fire Hextall the entire time. Him. They the entire time that he was GM essentially. Especially the last like two years, but yeah. look, I don't think it's that bad of a state. I know everybody thinks it's the end of the world. They can still make the playoffs. <laughs> I know it's crazy to people. They can still make the playoffs. That, they just have that, to get their shit together. That would be a Flyers' way to end the season. Absolutely. Not only that, it would be their way to barely make the playoffs and then make it to the Eastern Conference Finals, <laughs> thus lifting everybody's expectations right back up. Yeah. And they're going, "Wait, are they the team because who pulled we've off seen that run?" Before, the, the seating doesn't mean anything. No, it right. doesn't. No, I could care less where they finish. And we've also seen this team have collapses and streaks. Again, I'm not seeing a very good defensive team. The way they're playing right now, no. But then again, you watch some of the games they have played where they played perfect hockey and it was very noticeable. And you're like, well, what happened? You know? It's the consistency. They just don't have it. But that's a good team, right? And they were consistent last year. That's why I'm like, what are you guys talking about? (laughs) What mix? Why were they able to do it last year and not this year? I don't know. Need yeah. more voice in the room, I guess. But the only All thing with the playoffs, you just have to get in. All yeah. you have to do is get in. All you have to do is get in, man. You're you're not wrong. And we have plenty of talent in the organization. Maybe Frost. He did mention Frost uh, that he's ahead of schedule. I don't think that means that he's going to be playing, but maybe he'll play for the Phantoms in the yeah, playoffs or something. He could be fully healthy and maybe come in late, but it's like... Oh, he did? It's like late May. Okay. Or by, by May. By so, May. So that would be potentially Flyers playoffs or potentially um, end of season. Yeah, I AHL. Think. But even to get him AHL time would be awesome. You know, AHL play for the Phantoms already doing well. Throw him on there with whoever's down there. Mm-hmm. I the think time. the last scheduled Flyers game is May tenth. Yeah, so it would be Phantoms, I imagine, or playoffs for us, which I doubt they'll put him in the playoffs. He's been out all year. Or if they miss, they could throw him in to just get a couple games in if they're already out at that point. Yeah, like mathematically eliminated. 
Don't even mention that. I don't want to hear that. And honestly, I don't oh, yeah. expect that. I expect this to go down to the wire, and so I expect I. Uh, our emotions to go. That, that's what I'm thinking too. Down. I think it's just going to hurt them with the games in hand on Boston. Yeah, because you got, as I said in the beginning, you got three games in hand, and you're two I, points back. I will say this: it's it's time to make a big trade, though. In the off season, you yeah. have the assets. If you need, the, if you really believe you don't have the right mix, there are guys who are going to be available now with expansion, all this stuff going on. It's time to make a move. You, you think it's like you think it's a move like a Richards move? What do you mean? Like, like trading for Mike Richards or Jeff Carter? Yeah, like I would hope those. not. I hope we we do a better job than yeah. Simmons and Braden Shen. And yeah. no, actually, that's a good trade for Mike Richards, considering what he was at the time. Mm-hmm. And the but drastic yeah. decline that he went Pronger. through. Well, I see more the Chris Pronger move. Like I'm, I don't need a guy who's in his prime. I don't care if he's in his prime. I don't doesn't matter to me. Yeah. I need a guy who's a winner and a guy who's like a thoroughbred. The same thing as Niskanen. Like, I need a guy who refuses to lose, who refuses to be intimidated. I need two, three, or four of them. You know? Yeah. That's what we need. Yep. They're not easy to find. All right, gentlemen. Um, all right. Let's do goodbyes here. Uh, Amade, why don't you tell people where they can follow you, what you're working on, you know, any anything at all. Well, you can follow me over at Twitter at Amadeo Gracia 98 You can find me uh, complaining during Flyers games as the usual over the past few weeks. You can also check me out on YouTube at on TTP Sports, where I also complain about Flyers games, Sixers games, Phillies games, Eagles games, wherever you think. And then also just don't forget to check out the Flyer Up podcast. We're live whenever we go on on the Painted Lines, TTP Sports, and Flyers Fan Mania 93 when we go live with the podcast there. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, definitely make sure to check out his stuff. Chris, people know where to follow you, I think, at this point, but once again, let them know. Yeah, um, obviously, I'm a writer with you guys um, for Flyers Nitty. Um, Twitter is underscore at Chris Mayer. Um, my YouTube is Flyers 93, as Amadeo mentioned. Um, and again, co host of the Florida podcast. And uh, Yuri, thank you for having me on. It was a good time. Yeah, always, buddy. Yeah, and thank you for coming on, guys. And uh, I look forward. I'll, I'll do your podcast as well, and uh, I'll, I'll shout that out on here when we do it. Um, but yeah, thanks for coming on. It was nice to actually have like a press conference to talk about. Yeah. But man, like I didn't want to talk about the game. You know, I didn't either. I don't want to talk about the game. It's weird. I'm getting tired of talking about the games. It's almost like, oh, are we back to like it? It's kind of like a weird rebuild, you know? Or like, are we playing for next season? You know, like it, <laughs> I, it's. I know that everybody feels that way, but it's not true. I understand why everybody thinks it's over. I get the messages online. It's not over. And if your coach thinks it's over when he's in this position, you should fire him today. If you if you have players on your team who think it's over when they're in the position they're in where they're like two places out, uh, outside of a playoff spot, you should get rid of them yeah. for sure. And if they're going to do something over. now, Thursday is the night because the Rangers are two points behind them. And if they lose Thursday, then they're tied with the Rangers. Well, they better start um, winning then. Yeah. They, <laughs> I don't know. How, start, how many, how many fights do you something. think? How many fights do you think we see? As many as it takes. <laughs> <laughs> They bring in Sam Warren just for one game. Be like, Sam, we just need you to punch somebody in the face. Yeah, you can get him like Bufflin against Vegas. He had two Vegas guys by their jerseys on the ice. Yeah. <laughs> we could use the Dustin Bufflin. Mm-hmm. We definitely use him. All right, gentlemen. It's a good one. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Like, subscribe. We'll have more, um, more podcasts coming. Check out the Always Level Up podcast, my episode with Curtis Gabriel. There's the one with Riley Cote. Great show. Uh, Lisa Ann, thanks, buddy. Um, yeah, definitely make sure to check that stuff out. More Gritty Rants, more content coming. We're going to keep doing this. I do have... Um, I think Anthony's coming back on with me next week. Potentially, I don't want to throw him under the bus if he can't. Um, if not, I'll figure figure out somebody else for that show. Following week after that will be Jason Martinez, so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, and then always level up stuff. Uh, there will be more coming. I'm working on more episodes. I don't want to announce those at the moment, but uh, more content to come. Thank you again, everybody, for listening, and remember to always stay gritty.